South Africa is spending billions of rand on COVID-19 relief efforts. Corruption allegations involving senior government officials have emerged. Someone must be held accountable. Well, to discuss this developing COVID-19 corruption saga, I'm joined by Public Services and Administration Minister Senzo Mkunu, Scopa Chairperson Mkulego Sengwa, as well as Corruption Watch researcher Melusi Ngala. Gentlemen, good morning, and thank you very much for your time. Perhaps I should start with you, Minister, and with an overall question. South Africans are losing trust in the government's ability and willingness or even readiness to really tackle corruption. I mean, research that was done in 2019 uh, called Corruption Perceptions Index shows that more than 50% of South Africans, of all South Africans, think that the government is doing a bad job in tackling corruption. How would you respond to that, Minister? I would respond uh, by saying that, uh, yes, um, uh, given the number of uh, allegations uh, over the past few years uh, 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 on uh, corruption in government uh, in all spheres, and uh, the uh, uh, rate of arrest and uh, uh, con uh, prosecution and conviction, um, yes, it does uh, uh, worry. Uh, uh, both us the, in the in government and the public service in, in particular. And and therefore the public is quite, uh, uh, the doubt is quite uh, uh, legitimate. But that does not mean that uh, there isn't anything that is uh, happening. Uh, you, you and I know that uh, over the past uh, six months or so, or even more, there's a lot of work that is being done to strengthen um, anti-corruption measures and uh, agencies and um, uh, in terms of capacitating those law enforcement agencies that are, are charged with this particular responsibility. And there's a lot of progress that uh, is being made, has been made and is being made. And, and therefore, I'm saying on one hand, Yes, uh, we note uh, um, uh, the perception and the worry and the concern, and uh, it is legitimate. But uh, over and above noting, we are working very hard, and uh, we are seeing progress from where we sit. Okay, we'll try and, and, and unpack that little, uh, little bit a bit a bit later, Minister. Can I bring you here, Mr. Mr. Thema? Parliament is the oversight body that is supposed to hold executives accountable. You chair a very important committee, SCOPA, which is on public accounts. Do you think currently, when you are hearing about the COVID-19 corruption, all sorts of allegations coming up, that Parliament could have done a better job in providing oversight over this whole COVID-19 scenario? Well, I think there is merit um, in Parliament uh, taking a moment to introspect as to whether the parliamentary processes and protocols have been sufficient uh, insofar as oversight uh, is concerned. But one must also hasten to say that um, we must understand that this is the first time you are dealing with a, a national disaster of this magnitude and to the extent to which uh, it has had an impact on financial uh, obligations of the state and the speed with which it needs to move uh, is something which Parliament uh, may have not uh, envisaged in its scenario planning for such an eventuality. And so some of the protocols of oversight may have been, uh, not, not, not may have, actually were created as and when things were happening. However, having said that, um, the Disaster Management Act in itself uh, will need to be re-looked at so that it can be able to give Parliament a greater role as part of the checks and balances. It cannot be the sole prerogative of the executive to make determinations of the national disaster without the input of Parliament. So some, some, critical, some, some critical lessons, sorry, Mr. Shango, to cut you in here, some critical lessons. Okay. I just need to bring no, in, I need, I'll, I'll allow you to, to, to make that point just now, but I just need to bring in Melu Singaba. And the reason I'm doing this, just to get an opening uh, uh, remarks from him, because we're also tracking the developing story. Uh, I'm hoping your offices were advised that here in Gauteng, the ANC provincial leadership is about to give a briefing regarding this matter.
matter that Melu Singaba and his colleagues at Corruption Watch have been focusing on, which is what they call the critical state of the health sector in South Africa. And now we're faced with this uh, tender, this PPE tender allegations here, and the ANC is going to pronounce about it. But let me just bring in you, Melusi. Melusi, you focus on this whole issue of corruption for over the years, but you zoned in particularly on the health sector. Why? Um, we honed in on the health sector because, um, first and foremost, it's, it's a critical and fundamental aspect of our constitution, the access to health care for all South Africans. And secondly, for many years, um, some might even argue as far as uh, it predates 94, that, you know, our health healthcare system has been in tatters. But we can't avoid the fact that corruption, especially in the past eight years, at least as far as we have looked at the data that we have gathered in that period, has been, um, has added to how the health sector is not effective. Um, our public health care is in tatters, essentially. We have clinics and hospitals where professionals, administrators are looting people are making use of resources as they wish for their own personal use. And it's to whose, um, you know, it, it, it basically affects the vulnerable people. Um, the old people are not accessing health care, they can't access medication. And we also have children that are affected. So it's, it's it, every day we inundated with stories about how the health care system is ailing. Yeah, and I very, think it that... has been a critical metaphor. That's very sad to, to, to hear. And, and, and uh, Babu Shango, let me bring you back in. I cut you there just a short while ago when you were saying it can't just be the role of the executive to be, be busy with issues of national disaster management and that that act needs to be reviewed. And you were about to make another point. Yes, the point is that why that becomes important is that the regulations and the decisions of the declaration of a disaster have got a financial impact and they speak to the reprioritization of budgets amongst other things. And therefore, Parliament must be given ample time to respond and to actually uh, be part of the process. Here I'm referring to responding to issues in real time. However, that in itself um, must also be viewed in the context that generally we are dealing with the situation of corruption which has been entrenched as a norm, unfortunately. And to push back on those frontiers, we need a very proactive parliament. And this must therefore not just be seen as the prerogative and role of SCOPA itself. Portfolio committees are an integral part of the parliamentary checks and balances and the conveyor belt of over such an accountability. And so it, 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 this must be understood also that if you speak about state capture, Parliament was not spared from that. The law enforcement agencies were not spared from that. And so we need to move with the necessary speed and agility to recover from the setbacks of that time so that the envisaged uh, makeup of the state for oversight, amongst other things, is able to uh, find its footing again. It is important uh, that the law enforcement agencies, and I think what Minister Mkuno was saying is important in this regard, that if you speak about the NPA, for example, they had vacancies of 700 prosecutors. Treasury has made now those funds available in part to actually deal with that. What we need to see, therefore, is that injection of financial resources must be coupled with the attainment of what that money was for. So if the NPA complained that they got vacancies and don't have funds, when the funds are available, we must therefore see them moving in the direction of filling those vacancies to achieve okay. the intended outcome of successful that, prosecutions. That's, that's South that's Africa is faltering consequence management. Consequence. I'm glad you've mentioned that word because I was going to ask Minister Mkhunu. And by the way, let me just remind you, gentlemen, please stay connected. We are watching developments on the ground here in Gauteng where the ANC provincial uh, uh, executive is about to pronounce itself regarding this matter that's made big headlines here of the allegations of the PPE. I'm informed that it's about to begin. You stay connected because we'll come back to you and continue our discussions. And I'm hoping you'll be able to hear and listen in to what the ANC has to say. Please stay